everybody! My name is Mira Scarlett and today I'm going to show you how to make what is called a thread chain. Thread chains have a lot of uses. They can be used to make simple belt loops, they can be used to make delicate loops for buttons or for corset ties. You can also use them to make French tacks to keep your linings in place or even to create lingerie guards to keep your bra straps from peeking out. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a thread chain and also how to apply it to each one of the cases I mentioned before. So let's get started! To make a thread chain, you will need a hand sewing needle and some thread. Take a long piece of thread and fold it in half, then feed it through the eye of your needle. This will create a thicker line of thread that we can crochet in order to create a strong and sturdy thread chain. Knot off your thread and make a back stitch on your fabric. I have found there are a few ways you can do this, but I personally go back through the threaded end for extra security. Don't pull it all the way through though. Your goal here is to create a loop from the back stitch to begin the crocheting slash chaining process. Hold the back stitch loop open with your thumb and middle finger or index finger and hold the needle taut with your other hand. Use your middle finger to pull the thread in the needle through the back stitch loop which will then create another small loop. Hold the thread taut while pulling the needle thread and closing up the loop. Doing this creates your first chain. Then you simply start the process over again, taking what we will continue to refer to as the backstitch loop, pulling the needle through it, and continuing to make chains in that manner until the chain loop is at the desired length. Here it is from another angle and hopefully a little bit easier to see. When you have reached the desired length of your chain thread, you can finish it off by threading the needle through the last loop and pulling tight, knotting off at the end. From here, you can pull it back through to create a loop like I'm doing here, or attach it to another piece of fabric or notion. Here you can see we have a nice sturdy loop created from crocheting the threads. Now let's apply this technique to some different scenarios. Let's say you have a lovely sash that you want to add onto a dress to just jazz it up a little bit. Measure the width of your sash so you know how long to make your thread chain and determine where exactly you want the sash to lay and mark it with a pin or with some chalk. Create your thread chain. In this case, the sash had a width of two inches, so I made a two inch long thread chain. Once done and tied off, you can sew the end of the thread chain to the point where you marked earlier in order to create a quick and functioning belt loop. Make a quick loop for buttons by following the same steps. While creating the length of thread chain, you can check and see how it fits around the button to make sure your loop doesn't end up too tight or too loose, which could cause distortion in the fit of your garment. Now for one of my favorite uses of the thread chain, making lingerie guards. When wearing a sleeveless top or dresses, you don't want your bra strap accidentally peeking out, so I'm going to show you how to prevent this. For this technique, you are going to need button snaps. To start, you're going to hand sew the socket part of the button snaps to the inside of the shoulder near the shoulder seam. Now start making your chain thread about an inch away from the socket bit we just sewed on and tie it off. Grab the corresponding stud button and feed your threaded needle through one of the holes. Then push it through the chain thread in order to knot it off. And there you have it. This will keep your bra straps in place and keep them from peeking out. Another cool technique you can use with thread chains is called a French tack. 
The purpose of this type of tack is to hold two layers of fabric together loosely, typically at the hem of a skirt and skirt lining, so that the layers don't get away from each other, but they aren't so tightly tacked down that it may ruin the flow of the skirt or create visible pulls on the outer fabric. Create a chain thread on the lining of the garment that is about two to three inches long. Tie it off and sew it onto the seam allowance of the outer fabric. Make sure the spot you choose is close enough to the spot on the lining, otherwise the chain stitch may pull the lining and outer fabric and cause it to look distorted. When sewing closures like metal hooks and eyes, you can actually opt to get rid of the metal eyes and sew thread loops instead for a cleaner and more couture look. This was something I saw often on wedding gowns and special occasion dresses while doing alterations. If you want to create a decorative corset detail, you can use thread chains to make corset loops. Definitely not recommended for legit tightly laced up corsets by any means, but definitely a simple creative detail that can add more flair to a garment. All right, and that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that it helped you learn how to make thread chains and I hope that it inspires you to utilize thread chains in your future projects. Thank you guys so much again. Um, if you enjoyed the video and want to look forward to more, uh, simply click the subscribe button so you'll be notified of my next videos. I am gonna be focusing on sewing, cosplay, DIY content. So if you're into that and want to keep up with it, you can also turn on the bell notification so it'll let you know every time I post a new video. Again, thank you guys so much for all of your support and I will see you next time. Bye.